and welcome to Wild Ones. It's time for pre-service prayer. So if you're watching online or you're in the building, we just wanna invite you to go ahead and join us as we take the next few moments before our service gets started. And we just partner with Heaven's intercession. We partner with King Jesus and we come into agreement and we declare his will and his way to be had in this service tonight. So go ahead and join me if you're here. Father, we thank you so much for tonight. Abba, we thank you that you're already moving. We thank you that we just get in alignment tonight already. And we say, come in, King Jesus, and come and have your way fully. God, I thank you that tonight you will withhold no good thing from your children. God, I thank you that tonight there is freedom in this house. There is deliverance in this atmosphere. God, your word says that you'll take us from glory.
asking for a habitation of you. God, we ask that you would come and stay. God, we ask that you would come and inhabit this place right now before we move forward. We plead the precious blood of Jesus Christ right now. We plead the blood over this property. We plead the blood over this building. We plead the blood. I declare the blood of Jesus to soak and saturate this atmosphere right now. I declare the blood of the perfect one, the blood of the blameless one, the blood of the holy one right now to be poured out. I thank you. The devil must pass over. I declare the blood of Jesus to be poured out in a tangible way that the enemy must lose his grip. I declare in the name of Jesus every 
is one thing that I know that you are faithful. Come on, sing. You are faithful. So I speak. So I speak out your word. It has the power to change my world. And you're my breakthrough. Sing your my. You're my breakthrough. Oh, come on, sing. I will trust you. I will trust you. Just playing out in the spirit. 
Come on, stir the waves of praise in this house tonight. Romama city, diri amama ke. Oh, na mama, ma, we give you praise, we give you praise, we give you praise. Oh, not our way, but your way. Not our way, but your way. Your ways are higher, your thoughts are higher. Just break through with praise. Robobo so kiriri amamae. Oh, come on, just stir it up. Just stir it up. Lift up your voice and stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. Oh, the love, the love. Stir it up. Romae na mamae na mamae na mama show. Stir it up. Stir it up. Hey, there it is. Come on, just get focused on Jesus. the doors open up the doors of your heart open up the doors shokolana mama let the king of glory in let the king of glory in Shippers release this sing we pour, we pour. 
there's the shift. There's the shift. The king is in the room right now. Oh, what's your response when the king's in the room? What's your response when the king's in the room? I'm going to break open the alabaster jar of my heart. I'm going to break open the alabaster jar of my heart. Oh, I don't care what they say. I'm pouring out my praise. Have it all. Have it all, have it all. Come on, his presence is here. His presence is here. Lord, we thank you. We acknowledge your presence. Oh, we break open the alabaster jar of our heart tonight. We don't need a greater moment than this moment. We don't need another day. Oh, we go ahead and break open the alabaster jar of my heart. Just sing, I pour out my love. time just sing we pour we pour out our love we pour out our love we pour out our love you're the only one worthy worthy
come on sing you deserve it all you every voice just sing it out we give we give you the highest praise you deserve it all you deserve one more time sing we give you the highest Seeing our affection. just a moment here. Let's bring it down. There's a moment here. Oh, we see you, Lord. Will you let them pour it out over you tonight? Will you let them pour his love out over you? Hey, every hand raised, every hand raised in this house tonight. We receive your love. We receive your love. Oh, I'm just reminded of the story when Jesus comes to wash the feet of his disciples. 
And they say, no, Lord, surely you can't stoop low and clean the filth from us. But the Lord says, if I don't do this, you can have no part of me. Would you just let him come and wash those dirty places? Would you let him come? Oh, in tender love, he comes before you. In tender love, he comes before you. Oh, I pour out my love. I pour out my love. I pour out my love. Oh, I pour it out. I pour it out. I pour out my spirit upon my sons and my daughters. I pour out my spirit amongst my daughters.
Just drink of his presence here just for a moment. Just drink of him, drink of him. Just one taste, and you'll never be thirsty again. sing this to him.
Take us up with you, Lord. Take us up with you, Lord. Take us up into your lap, Lord. Take us up into that real place. Take us up, take us up. Take us up, take us up. Take us up, take us up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Take us up, take us up. Oh, just raise your hands up. Oh, I see the Lord taking you up by your hands. He's picking you up just like a father does with his little one. And he's taking you up. He's taking you up. The Holy Spirit's in this place. Father, we thank you for your presence. Holy Spirit, we love you. We appreciate you. We honor you, Holy Spirit. You can turn this mic down. We honor you, Holy Spirit.
just tell the Holy Spirit that you honor him right now? Just in your own words, say, Holy Spirit, I honor you. I love you. I adore you. I value you. I want more of you. Holy Spirit, I don't just want you in me. I want you to rest upon me. King Jesus, you're our shepherd. You are our shepherd. You're the great shepherd. You make us lie down in green pastures. And King Jesus, you created a green pasture tonight. Well, just I want you to press in. I want you to lean into the Holy Spirit right now in your own way. Whatever that looks like for you, I just want to I want to challenge you and encourage you to lean into the Holy Spirit just for another moment. Don't enjoy his presence, but don't just enjoy his presence. Lean into him. Lean into Abba Father right now. Lean into King Jesus right now. But let the Holy Spirit take you in deeper. Just open your mouth and let the Holy Spirit fill him. He'll fill him with the right words to say. Whether it be to King Jesus or whether it be to Abba Father, just open your mouth and don't get caught up with semantics, but just let him... Just let them lead you and what to pray and what to say. Come on, you're a son and a daughter. Lean into the Holy Spirit. Lean into him a little bit more. Lean into him a little bit more. Some of you need to be real honest right now with Abba Father. Lean into him. You need to to let him know you don't trust him fully. He's not threatened by it. He already knows you don't. Just lean into him. Just say, Abba, I don't trust you fully, but I want to. King Jesus, I I don't don't really see you as my shepherd, but I want to. You just got to lean into him. You got to have these hot conversations with Abba Father. King Jesus, the Holy Spirit will help you. The Holy Spirit fills our mouths. We lean into him. This is one of the most important things we could do tonight. Lean into him. Have a conversation with him. Press in until you feel something shift. Come on, talk to him. love you, but I don't see many of you talking to him. I see you just enjoying his presence. I want you to talk to him. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying, I'm trying to give you a secret to lean into the Holy Spirit. 
You've got to open your mouth and you've got to trust the Holy Spirit's going to fill your mouth, but you've got to be honest with yourself. If you feel uncomfortable in moments like this, I don't know how to lean in, Pastor. Help me. I'm trying to help you. You just got to be real. Be honest. Tell them what's on your mind. Tell them what's on your heart. If you're struggling, be honest. If you're not, that's okay. Just say, Abba, I trust you. Abba, I love you. I can't live without you. I mean, you just got to lean into them. Have a conversation with them. Don't worry about a to-do list. Don't worry about the weather. Don't worry about your children. Lean into them. Just be real right now. King Jesus, he'll help you. King Jesus has to become your daily bread. The presence of God is amazing, but he points you back to King Jesus. One of the most important jobs Holy Spirit has is to point us back to King Jesus. And then King Jesus points you to Abba. Breathe in the presence and lean into the presence. Lean into King Jesus. Lean into Abba. Just lean into him. The woman with the issue of blood pressed through the crowd. She leaned into Jesus by pressing into the crowd. You got to press through your emotions, press through your thoughts, press through your day and lean in. You made it out tonight. Make it worth your while. Lean in. Lean in. This is where the church has to grow. We got to grow in these moments. We got to grow. We can't wait to the end of service to be all wild. We have to, we have to come ready. We've got to mature. We've got to grow in this. We've got to lean in. Abba, I trust you. I trust you, King Jesus. I honor you. Teach us, Holy Spirit, how to lean in. Reveal to us how King Jesus leaned in when he walked the earth. How he went away. Reveal to us how he went away. What he did. What he said. How he spent time with you, Abba.
I promise you there's a place in King Jesus that you've yet to experience. I promise you. There's a place in Abba that you've yet to experience. And they're, they're united and they are one, yet they are two persons. And it's easy to settle just when the presence shows up in the room. It's easy to be content when the Holy Spirit shows up in the house, but there's a place There is a place in King Jesus that you've yet to encounter, and there's a place in Abba Father you've yet to encounter. And they're both in agreement. And if we're gonna make the impact that God has called Oasis Cattle Mills to make in Hunt County, we must lean in and have Holy Spirit teach us how to lean in. And that, that means if it takes two hours, so be it. Don't be a believer that just settles when the present shows up and it feels good and it feels nice and the Holy Spirit's in the room and that was, that was pleasant. I mean, it wasn't the presence of God in the room. Oh, hallelujah. He was there. I'm not trying to belittle Holy Spirit. What I'm doing is I'm pointing out a mindset that many Christians struggle with. They're content with Holy Spirit showing up. They're content with Holy Spirit being in the room. But some feel uncomfortable to lean in. Some don't even know they're supposed to lean in. They don't know how to lean in. This is really important that we allow Holy Spirit to teach us. He says, if you seek, you'll find. If you knock, the door will be opened. If you ask, he will answer. There must be a pursuit on our part. There has to be a pursuit, not from a place of striving, but from a place of wanting more and longing more and not being in a rush. Sit down, stand up, get on your face, get on your knees, it doesn't matter unless Holy Spirit tells you to do something specific. The secret to your victory is gonna be allowing the Holy Spirit to take you into places in King Jesus and Abba Father that you've yet to experience. And not just settle for the Holy Spirit showing up in your living room, but knowing there's more. You're great. You gotta be grateful for the Holy Spirit. You gotta be thankful for him showing up. Enjoy his presence, drink him in, absolutely. But don't think that's all there is. There's so much more. The kingdom of God is endless. And I wanna provoke you tonight to pursue a deeper place in King Jesus and a deeper place in Abba Father and the Spirit will bring you in. He'll take you there. But it may cost you three hours. It may cost you food for a day. It may cost you your favorite TV show or your favorite book. Of course, besides the Bible. It may cost you. Some of you may be so rigid in your devotion that you're missing out on the deeper things of God.
You're so disciplined that you're disciplining yourself right out of the deeper things of God. When you hang out with the Lord, there's not a lot of transformation happening because you're too disciplined. You've got to read one chapter. You've got to pray for 30 minutes in the Holy Ghost. It's, a, it's an ebbing and a flowing. This is an ebbing and a flowing, church. It's an ebb and a flow, an ebb and a flow. It's, it's a rhythm, it's a dance. This is a dance with the Holy Spirit. To be led by the Spirit of God or to be sons and daughters of God, that means it's a dance. He leads the dance, you don't lead the dance. You don't decide if you wake up and go right into the Word. He decides that. You don't decide if you wake up and pray in the Holy Ghost for 30 minutes. He decides that. He decides. It's a dance. You take the first step, Holy Spirit, I'll follow. You don't want me to start with the Word this morning? That's fine. Where do you want me to start? You should me to turn on music and sit and rest in your presence. Okay, I'll start there. And then he says, get on your face. Okay, I'll get on my face. All right, now read this verse. Okay, I'm going to read this verse. It's a dance. It's a rhythm. It's a flow. That's what this is. This isn't Sunday morning of what we experienced. Same same Holy Spirit, same King Jesus, same Abba Father. But it's a different rhythm. It's a different song. That means it's a different kind of dance. And when you understand there's a rhythm in the presence, there's a rhythm in your, in your relationship with him, He's not a genie. You can't rub the Bible the right way and get rhema. It's not how it works. Let me pray in the Holy Ghost for 30 minutes and I'll open the word and I'll surely I'll get rhema today. It's not how it works. It's a rhythm. And those of you that are still in your spirit, you're calm in your soul, you'll be able to follow the leading. Those that are anxious, those that are Distracted, it will be tough to follow the dance. This is a dance. Sometimes the dance is fast, sometimes the dance is slow. Sometimes the dance stops, even though you're in the middle of the dance and you just make eye contact. But it's still a dance. It's a rhythm, it's a flow. Take this home and watch what will happen in your prayer life. Watch what, your, watch what will happen. Better way to word it, watch what will happen in your relationship with Abba, your relationship with King Jesus, and your relationship with the Holy Spirit. There are three persons, yet they're one. You need to see that there are three persons. they are three separate entities, but yet they are completely unified. Holy Spirit is not Jesus. Jesus is not Abba. Abba is not Jesus. Abba is not Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is not Jesus. Jesus is not Holy Spirit. There are three separate persons. Although Jesus came from Abba, the Holy Spirit is God's Spirit. Jesus is God in the flesh that walked the earth. They're completely unified, yet they're three separate persons. And you have to see them as three separate persons. Don't get caught up with semantics. If you pray to King Jesus or you pray to Abba, don't get caught up, but there will be a deepening of the relationship. Or when you want to talk to Abba, you're going to talk directly to Abba. 
in Jesus' name. And there will be times where you talk directly to King Jesus because that's what the Spirit instructs you to do. And Abba is completely okay with it. And the closer you get, the greater these three relationships will form in your life and they're completely in unison. They're not fighting one another for your attention. They are completely in unison. And all three love you. All three care about you. All three adore you. And all three work together to accomplish God's perfect will in you and through you. Why don't you make your way back to your seats if you can? So if you can just keep playing, it'd be great. We can just bring the scent down some, but just play in that background there. Amen. It's important to understand that there, you have Father, you have Son, and you have Holy Spirit. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They're completely unified, but they're three separate persons. Holy Spirit didn't die for you. King Jesus died for you. Holy Spirit is not King. Jesus is King. God is Father. Jesus is not the Father. Just makes sense. It's not about getting hung up on semantics. What this is about is this is about seeing them as three different persons, but yet they're one. Abba Father himself is not in the room. His spirit's in the room. King Jesus is not here in the flesh. But King Jesus' spirit is, the, is also the Holy Spirit. It's the presence of God that's here. But the Holy Spirit is not Abba. The Holy Spirit's Holy Spirit. When you're praying to Abba, you're praying to the Father. But it's the Holy Spirit praying through you. It's amazing. But, but the more you recognize these three persons... Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and their functions and their roles that will help you when you go into time, when you go to spend time in prayer. It will help you connect easier with Abba. It will help you connect easier with King Jesus and it will help you connect with Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in you. He dwells in you. But it doesn't rest on everybody. The Spirit of the Lord comes upon me because He's anointed me. He comes upon you when you're doing what you're anointed to do. But the Holy Spirit lives inside of the born again believer and He teaches us how to pray. The Bible says in Romans that the Holy Spirit teaches us how to pray. King Jesus taught us how to pray too. But we don't just go into prayer just quoting what King Jesus said because he said, say this prayer. It has to come from a relationship. It comes from within. And many people's prayer lives are not that effective because it comes up here. It comes out of here. I see this three, three different levels of, of intimacy in prayer. You can pray out of your head and you, you won't leave transformed. You'll probably leave the same way you came in. When you pray from your heart, it may move you to tears because you're emotional and you're in the moment. But that must translate out of your spirit. Must You must get to your, you must get to your spirit, man, when you pray. When you pray out of your heart, you're praying out of your soul. There's nothing wrong starting there, but you've got to get down here. This is where you're going to see transformation come in your prayer life. And it may take you a couple hours to get there. It may take you five minutes to get there. 
This morning it took me about an hour to get there. Maybe about an hour and 15 minutes. There's no time frame on it. But when I went into prayer this morning, Holy Spirit said, get on your knees. And I eventually got on my knees and put my face in the chair. And before I knew it, boom, King Jesus showed up. King Jesus showed up. Now, Jesus is king. He is the one true king. God made him king. Abba, Father, it pleases him that he made King Jesus king. There's no competition between King Jesus and Abba, none whatsoever. They are completely in perfect unity. Holy Spirit loves to point people to King Jesus, and Holy Spirit loves to bring people into the throne room. There's no competition with them. There's no fight. They're all working towards the same goal, which is Abba's will. And it's trusting the Holy Spirit that whatever needs to happen in your times with the Lord will happen. This is, this is where we're gonna be able to move forward as a church. In a, in, a, in a faster, more accelerated rate. The Bible says, Paul writes to the church of Corinthians, he says, as your faith increases, he says, our sphere of influence will also increase. Hunt County's a pretty big county. Looking at it in terms of like yardage, square miles, it's a pretty large county, lots of land. There's not that many people that live in Hunt County. There's around 100,000 people, probably a little bit more than 100,000 people now. Greenville's the hub of Hunt County. Last time I checked, I think it was around 26,000 people. It's probably grown some since. I believe last time I checked, Hunt County was, well, it was around 100,000. If we're going to impact this county, we have to dance with the Holy Spirit. You can't jerk the Holy Spirit around in the dance. You can't make him do what you want him to do. It's not, it's not how it works. You can prophesy the will of the Father and Holy Spirit is oftentimes waiting for an assignment that comes from the Father's will out of your mouth. Just like angels are also waiting for you to declare God's word to, to be activated. But we don't command angels. We don't command angels. Just like it would be rude to tell my wife what to do. And when King Jesus shows up, he may show up as a shepherd, but he's still king. He, he, he is the shepherd. And he'll show up in moments of your life as a king. Every time he shows up, he's king, period. But he'll show up in moments as a shepherd. But when you honor him as king, you get the most out of him from him being shepherd. If you only see him as a shepherd, you're not, you're not going to get the most out of him from being a shepherd. You get the most out of King Jesus when you honor him as king. How many of you guys believe that God has a kingdom and it's a real kingdom? How many of you guys know God is your father? He's not just God in heaven. He's your, he's your father. He's, he's your actual father. And he has a kingdom that he has invited us all to be a part of. And then he gave us the responsibility and the joy to go tell people about his kingdom. Evangelism becomes easy when you have a direct relationship with Abba. It becomes real easy. Like I could talk to you about my earthly dad for the rest of the night. I could tell you his heart. I could tell you things that he likes, things he doesn't like. I could tell you where he lives. I could tell you what his house looks like. I could tell you uh, things about him, the kind of cars he drives, the music he listens to. I could tell you about him, and I could bring you into his world just by communicating to you 
about my earthly dad because I know him that well. Because I'm his son. And he raised me and he taught me. And, and it just becomes a lot easier when you, when you really see yourself as a son and a daughter to be able to tell people about your father. And then when they reject you, it, it hurts it hurts. If images out of the way, it doesn't hurt you. It hurts your heart for your father. Say, like, oh man, no, you don't get it. Like, Abba, Father really loves you. <laughs> he really cares about you. I don't want anything to do with Jesus. Ah, no, you want every. Trust me, you want everything to do with him. You want every. I promise you, you do. But you can't force people into the kingdom. But this becomes a lot easier to talk to people. And witness this whole thing of like the pressure of witnessing to people about Jesus because we're a Christian. That that pressure is driven by works and that's religion. It's actually it's actually witchcraft. But when you have a genuine, authentic relationship with Abba. And you can go around and tell people about your dad and you can go tell people about your king. America has a president, but, but we have a king. And I want to tell you about my king. Does this make sense? It just makes it a lot easier. It takes the pressure off of trying to feel like you got to get a word of knowledge or you gotta get a prophetic word for somebody, you can just tell them about your king. Tell them about your father. I used to be, I used to be lost just like you, but he brought me in as a son and a daughter, and this is, this is who I am now, and I just, I wanna, I wanna tell you, I wanna tell you about him. And it just, it makes it a lot easier now, and then you live your life from this identity of being a son and a daughter. I don't, I don't recall ever one time Abba Father calling me pastor. You know what he calls me though? He calls me son. If you're going to him as a leader in the church, I would encourage you to stop and just go to him as a son and a daughter. If you're going to him as a husband or a wife, I would go, I would just encourage you to stop and just go to him as a son and a daughter. If you're going to him as a CEO because you need wisdom on your company, I would just encourage you to stop and just go to him as a son or a daughter. That's what I'd do. Because when you go to him like that, he'll give you exactly what you need. He'll give you exactly what you need. The goal every time we spend time with him is transformation, and that's his heart for you more than that's your heart for yourself. He desires you to be transformed more into his son than we desire. So this whole pressure of trying to fight to want to be transformed needs to stop because it's witchcraft. At least it can turn into witchcraft when it's a strive and it's a, it's a works thing. Who's put this spell on you? Who's bewitched you? I wanna share something with you that Holy Spirit shared with me today. And um, I just, I, I'm not gonna take long tonight but I just, I wanna, I wanna talk to you about something. I want you to go to Ephesians. Go with me in your Bibles to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter one. I'm gonna read out of the, uh, that one translation I'm gonna read out of. I'm gonna read out of that one. You know. You know that one. Let's go to New Living Translation. It 
Start in verse 15. It says, ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I've not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. Somebody say there's always a deeper place. Somebody say there's always more. Look up here for a minute. I want you, I want you to really understand there's always more. If you're bored in your relationship, that's not on God, that's on you. He desires to bring you in. But boredom, listen, boredom is a fruit of pride. If you're bored in your relationship with King Jesus, it's a fruit of pride. It's not because you're having an off day, it's a fruit of pride. Something is wrong if you're bored as a believer. And it's not King Jesus, it's not Holy Ghost, and it's not Abba. And the quicker we embrace our faults, the quicker he'll bring us in and he will revive that relationship and he'll bring you in and you'll have encounters and experiences with King Jesus and with Abba by the Spirit. It's amazing how they work together. The other day I had an encounter with Abba and King Jesus stood there and I experienced the love of the Father coming out of King Jesus, but I was in Abba's lap. This, this morning I had an experience with King Jesus and it, I got delivered in my house. My dog was there, that was it. But he was in his kennel so he couldn't distract me. I'm getting delivered in my house. Another level of freedom hit me. And King Jesus showed up and all he had to do, all I had to do was admit that I had pride in my life and I had jealousy in my heart. And through humility, he shows up and just stands in the soul of my mind and in the soul of my belly and he drived out wickedness. He didn't say a word, he just showed up. And the Bible says that when the strong man shows up, there has to be a, a, a man that's even stronger. All King Jesus did was show up and he had a scepter and he had a crown and he just stood there and it drove out wickedness. He didn't say a single word. But it took about an hour and 15 minutes to start getting to this place. It didn't happen in five minutes. It took a minute. I hung out in his presence. And then Holy Spirit said, get on your knees. I got on my knees and just put my, my head in the chair and one thing led to another. Before I know it, man, boom, King Jesus was there. And he showed up with a scepter in his hand and a crown on his head. But it came through humility. He resists the prideful. And as I began to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and repent and be honest with what was in my heart, King Jesus showed up and began to drive out wickedness. Anybody can have this kind of encounter. I didn't go to him as Pastor Lindsay. Any son or daughter can encounter this. But there's a deeper place there's more, but it's a dance. How long are you willing to dance with the Holy Spirit? It's more than just, oh, I pray on my way to work. That's good, that's awesome. Do that, don't stop praying. Cease without praying, pray everywhere, pray all the time. Pray while you're sleeping, but there's a dance. There's a dance that is meant to happen behind closed doors. There's a dance made for corporate, public moments, but there's also a dance meant for private moments. 
And if you get impatient in the private moments, you'll miss out on the deeper encounter. God has a way of breaking us down to where we become impatient. I mean, to where we become patient. He has a way of driving impatience out of us. He has a way of breaking us down to where we become patient, where we truly long for transformation. We long for him and we look to him to deliver us. There's no shame in deliverance. There's no shame in deliverance, church. There's no shame. There's absolutely no shame in deliverance. There's no shame, absolutely not. Not one ounce of shame. Jesus paid the price so that we could be delivered. There's no shame. It's time we stop being ashamed of the very thing Jesus paid the price for. He paid for our deliverance. There's no shame in this. But there's a deeper place. Somebody say there's a deeper place. And he says, I've not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly. Verse 16, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light. You know what light is? Light is the love of, of the Father. Light is the love of the Father. What happens is, is when somebody gets delivered, it's actually Abba's love which is the most powerful force in the entire universe. His love, the reason, why, the reason why there's no darkness in heaven is because it's completely filled with light. But what is that light? It's the Father's love. The Father's love is the light. And he protects his kingdom by his love. He doesn't allow any wickedness in his kingdom. There's no, he doesn't allow any sorrow, any grief in his kingdom. It's just completely filled with light, which is his love. And I pray that you will encounter King Jesus in such a way where you will experience and you'll see in the spirit realm the love that comes out of him. It's not, it's not something he can control. It's just who he is. Because he's filled with God, it just beams through his pores, if you will. It's the love of God that drives demons out of people. Because it's power. His love is power. His love is fire. When we pray fire of the Holy Spirit, what we're praying is the love of the Father. When somebody shakes under the power of God, you know what they're shaking underneath? They're shaking underneath the love of God. His love is power. His love is fire. I pray that your hearts be flooded with light. What is he saying? I pray your hearts be flooded with his love. Completely get a revelation of his love for you. He says, I pray your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope. What is his love? What is his light? It's truth. It's love. It's grace. His holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. I also pray you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler, talking about King Jesus. Now look at the authority that Abba Father gave King Jesus. You have to see this, this is really important because Jesus is king. He is shepherd, but he is king. Jesus is king. Is he our shepherd? Absolutely. But to get the most out of him, to get the most out of him being your shepherd, you must honor him as king. 
If you lack honor in seeing him as king, you will lack in getting the most out of him as, a, as your shepherd. You receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you get the prophet's reward. You receive him as king and you get everything that he has to offer. You have to see Jesus as, as, a, as not just a king, as, the, as the, one, the one true king that Abba Father is not threatened by. He gave him that position. He gave King Jesus that position and he was happy to do so. And King and Abba Father sits in his throne. He sits in his throne and King Jesus, King Jesus serves Abba Father as king. The relationship there is King Jesus is, is Abba's son, absolutely. He is Abba's son. And the greatest title I believe King Jesus carries is son for him personally. He loves his father. There is nothing that could separate him from obeying his father. He, he saw God as father. He saw him as Abba. This was, this, I think this was the most important title he could have ever been given was son. When Abba came down, he didn't say, this is my king. This is the one I made king and whom I'm well pleased. This is my son. And he talked about his father. He loves his father. And I believe the greatest title King Jesus carries to this day is son. That's what I believe. But for us, he is king. Is he our brother, our elder brother? Absolutely. But to get the most out of your elder brother, you have to honor him as king. If you wanna get the most out of your relationship with Jesus, you must see him as your personal king. You have to see him. If you wanna get the most out of that relationship, you have to honor him as king. So when he comes in the room, he's not just Jesus, he's King Jesus. King Jesus is here. When he shows up, he shows up as a king always. But he may, he may move as a shepherd in your heart. He may move as a king and drive out wickedness. He may talk to you as an elder brother, but he's still king and you're, you're taking every word he says. Even though you're listening to him, and it's translating by the Spirit as your elder brother, but you're still receiving it from your king. In other words, if you always see Jesus as king, you will never grow so familiar where your relationship gets boring. And this is why boredom is a fruit of pride. And if there's pride in your heart, the Bible says that God resists the pride, the prideful, but he gives grace to the humble. And pride is a sneaky little devil. It's a sneaky little devil. And a little bit of pride, the Bible says, a little bit of yeast ruins the whole loaf. It's just a little bit of pride. A little bit of pride will begin to grow. It just all it takes is a little bit of pride, a little bit of dishonor, a little bit of familiarity, a little bit of nonchalant time in the presence, a little bit of pride. All it takes is a little bit. And what God's doing in our church is he's bringing us in by his spirit to such a degree of sensitivity to his presence. Such a degree of sensitivity to King Jesus. Such, such a degree of sensitivity to Abba Father. We don't get hung up on semantics, but there are times often that you need to talk directly to Abba. And there are times where you need to talk directly to King Jesus. And every day, every day, we need to talk to the Holy Spirit. Every day, it may be every day we need to talk to all three of them, but it's not about semantics. It's not about getting hung up. Oh, am I supposed to talk to Abba right now? Am I supposed to talk to King Jesus right now? Am I supposed to talk to the Holy Spirit right now? What am I supposed to do? Do you do that with your own family? When they walk in the room, do I say hello to my wife? And then do I say hello to my kids? Or do I just say hello to everybody? What do I, no, you just, you're just, you're just living life. Good morning, Abba, I love you. Good morning, King Jesus, I honor you. Holy Spirit, good morning. I know you're with me. I know you're in me. 
The reason why many Christians don't feel the Holy Spirit throughout their day is because they don't recognize the Holy Spirit. They don't honor the Holy Spirit. What I mean they don't recognize the Holy Spirit, what I'm saying is they don't... It'd be like if Tyler walked in the room and I just ignored him and I didn't say hello to him. Many Christians don't sense the Spirit throughout the day because they're not recognizing that he's with them. Why don't I feel you? When's the last time you said hello to him? When's the last time you just woke up with no agenda and said, Holy Spirit, good morning. I love you. King Jesus, I know you have a crown on. I know you have your robe on. I know you're my shepherd. I know you're my older brother, and I appreciate all those things. But I humble myself, and I bow my knee to one king, and that's you. You're my king. And Abba Father, I embrace your love today. I embrace your hugs. I embrace your kisses. I embrace your authority, and I embrace the authority you gave to my king, Jesus. Is this making sense? It's the relationship between all three. It's not just one. You're missing out if you're just having a relationship with one of them. Because all three bring something to the table. They all came from Abba, yes. But they all three bring something to your life. And it's a beautiful thing. And when you can capture all three and what they bring, and I'm still learning myself, but when you can grow in your relationships with all three of them, it changes how you talk to them. It changes the dynamic of your relationship. He says, verse 21, now King Jesus is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. Did you catch that? Talking about King Jesus. He says in verse 20 that Christ that, that uh, backing up to verse 19, this is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. In the heavenly realms. Now, King Jesus is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else. He's far above, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ. So watch this. Abba Father put all things, somebody say all things, under the authority of Jesus. Here, here, is, here is a distinction, yet completely unified. Abba Father gave, put all authority under King Jesus. Here, my son. I give you all authority. Now, King Jesus knows Abba is the leader, but he stewards the authority given to him very well. He doesn't abuse the authority. He doesn't misuse the authority. He stewards his authority that came from Abba Father. You see the dynamic here. So Abba's not on his throne nervous Jesus is gonna mess up. Abba completely trusts his son to carry out every assignment. Did you know that King Jesus is still carrying out assignments on behalf of Abba Father? Seated at his right hand. You know, these encounters my wife and I both had. Both of them, Jesus was actually standing up. But he was at the right hand of the Father. At least in my encounter, I don't, was it yours too? So he says, now he is far above any ruler, authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world. So currently right now, all authority has been given to King Jesus. Just process this for a minute. All authority has been given to him. He's king over the entire universe. He's king. This is amazing. It's pretty amazing that we serve King Jesus. It's pretty phenomenal. What this should do is this should wind up permeating your soul. Faith should wind up permeating your soul. 
as you get revelation on this. Not only in this world, but also in the world to come. There's a world coming, and he's going to be king there too. He's not going to stop being king. This world is going to pass away. There's going to be a new world that comes, and King Jesus will be the ruler in that world as well. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. So let me ask you this. Are you leaning into King Jesus for your benefit? He made him king for our benefit. He made him King Jesus for the church's benefit. Who's the church? If you're the church, let me see your hand. You're the church. So it pleases the Father to make Jesus king and to give him all authority for our benefit. It's pretty amazing. We don't just serve a king that is a ruler over one out of many kingdoms. We serve the king that has authority over the entire universe. And he is the king over the victorious kingdom. We know the kingdom of darkness is not the victorious kingdom. We know the kingdom of light, Jesus' kingdom, Abba's kingdom, is the victorious kingdom, and this is the king we serve. Did you know the king that we serve never lost a battle? He never lost a battle. King Jesus never lost one battle. And if we will put our faith and how powerful King Jesus is, if you'll put your faith, if you'll, have the, if you'll ask the Holy Spirit to bring you in to greater revelation on who your king is and how he never lost a battle, and this is your king, he never lost a battle, not one. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you something the Holy Spirit showed me that I'm so grateful that he showed me. Let's just wrap this, this, uh, this chapter up. He says, he says, and the church is his body. That means Christ, that means he's the head. King Jesus is the head of the church. He's the leader of the church. He's the king of the church. He's been given authority over all the church, not just our church, every born again believer, no matter their denomination, they're born again, every believer. King Jesus is in charge. He is, he is the go-to, it's King Jesus. This makes sense. King Jesus, Holy Spirit comes in the room. Holy Spirit comes in the room, what is he gonna do? He's gonna fulfill the will of King Jesus and Abba Father, and all three wills are perfectly harmonized. You can't miss it if you truly desire, if you truly desire Abba's will for your life. Holy Spirit will not allow you to miss it. If you yield and you humble yourself and you live from a place of humility as a son and a daughter, you will not miss God's will. There will not be one day that goes by that you miss his will. If you are sensitive, if you're humble, there won't be one day that goes by. Won't be one day. But what does this take? It takes a very important thing I'm gonna talk about in a minute. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ. So the church is his body. So we are made full and complete by King Jesus, who fills all things everywhere with himself. It pleases the Father that he made Jesus king. It pleases the Father that he made Jesus king. Absolutely pleases the Father. And King Jesus, God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head, verse 22, I'm reading this again, has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. King Jesus is our shepherd. But if you only see him as your shepherd and not your king, it's not good. He can't just be Jesus who died on the cross for your sins so you don't go to hell. He must become king. He must become king.
What happens is this. Many of us, many of us, whether we realize this or not, we have trust issues. We have trust issues with Abba. We have trust issues with King Jesus. Now, the good Bible Belt South Christian thing to say is, oh, I completely trust Abba. I mean, that's, that's the right answer, right? Like if, if we were to give out a test, I were to give a test out tonight, and I'd say, you know, who's in control over your life? You could answer the test correctly and say Jesus is. But there's also the honor system in the test. And if you had to answer it honestly, and this is where it takes the Holy Spirit to help, to help expose, do we really trust him with everything? Because remember, the spirit of Antichrist is out to get the person who is operating in their anointing, who's doing what they're called to do. Antichrist hates you. Antichrist, it's an actual demon. It's completely against you and everything that King Jesus stands for. It's against you. It's against you because, because it does not want you to fulfill the call of God on your life. Antichrist is an actual demon that hates your guts and will do everything that it can to stop you from serving King Jesus, from fulfilling the call on your life. But ultimately, ultimately the goal of Antichrist is to rub it in Jesus's face that it got you to be complacent and silent and backslide. Really, you're just, we're just the pawns for the Antichrist. Really, they're after, they're after hurting the Father's heart. That's really what they're after. It's really what Antichrist is after. We're just the pawn in the way and we're just, we're like, does this make sense? Antichrist does not care about, does not really care about us at the end of the day. It cares about hurting the Father's heart. It's trying to get at Jesus. It's trying to put one on him. This is, this is how demons operate and work. They're, they're after to destroy you because they know, they know it will mess with the Father's heart. And they're really after hurting the Father. They really want to hurt his heart. So what do they do? They harass you and I, and they attack you and I. They come after our marriages. They come after our children. They come after our finances. They try to get us to doubt God's word. We're just the pawns in the middle. They're really just anti-Christ. They're not anti-Tyler. They're anti-Christ in Tyler. We're just in the way. But we're going after God, and they're, so they're trying to, they're trying to get us to doubt all this. So I want to wrap this up with this. The Father's will for you and I is to live freely. His will for you and I is to live freely, to live without worry, to live without doubt, to live without fear. That's His will. Come to give life and life more abundantly. But what happens is many of us, without realizing it, we begin to take control of our lives. We'll take control by, by trying to control our children. Like, like it starts becoming in an un un unhealthy way. We'll try to control our spouse. We, we try to control ourselves. We try to control our money. We try to control things around us. But I, I wanna talk about controlling yourself. When we try to control ourselves, now you have the fruit of self-control, that's a good thing, it's a fruit. It's one of the true riches, that's healthy. But I'm talking about when we take, when we take it into our own hands and it becomes a control that stems from not trusting the Father. Self-control is empowered by the Holy Spirit. Control, this kind of control I'm talking about is evil. It stems from not trusting Abba. It stems from not trusting King Jesus. So what we do 
is that it manifests in different ways, but we take control of our own lives. This kind of control is a fruit of pride because we're saying, I don't trust Abba. Now, Leviathan, this is what Holy Spirit showed me today. And it's, it has helped me tremendously. I just wanna, I wanna land the plane right around here. King Jesus said, if you control, this is what he told me today. If you control your life, then Leviathan is your king. Because Leviathan is the king of the children of pride. You can trust King Jesus in one area of your life and Jesus is king there, but you can take control in your own hands, not self-control, talking about unhealthy control. You can take control, not trusting King Jesus will do what he says he's gonna do and not trusting Abba that he'll do what he says he's gonna do and you take control of your own life. And this is like where you, you have maybe desires in your heart that you know are not from the Lord and you're trusting he's driving those out. He's, the Bible says what God started, he will complete what he started. First Thessalonians 5, I think around verse 23, talks about made up of body, soul, and spirit, and that God is God who is faithful. He will, he will make sure that you stay blameless to the end. This is where King Jesus is shepherd, and he's king. Isaiah 42 talks about King Jesus stands. I'll put it this way. He stands in front of even a little flicker of a candle. He's guarding. Even if you were one day on fire and the next day all you have is a little flame left, King Jesus is standing guard over that flame. That's how much he loves you. Why is one day I'm on fire and the next day I feel like all I have is a little flicker? King Jesus loves you. Isaiah 42, it's amazing. But what happens is we then take control. So like one way this manifests is like this, is, you know, Holy Spirit, I was driving the other day and Holy Spirit said, I was uh, thinking about an individual and, and they don't go to our church, but just an individual that, that my wife and I know and how, how they, they're struggling with PTSD from spiritual warfare. Holy Spirit said, did you know that there's PTSD in warfare? You know, there's PTSD and when people come home from, uh, the war, Iraq, whatever, there's PTSD. There's PTSD and police officers and experiences that they go through. There's PTSD from different things in life. A tragic accident can cause PTSD, but there's also PTSD in warfare. And I was thinking about this individual who they've been hurt in the church and they were attacked, they were attacked, and now they're showing on PTSD. And so what, they, what they're doing is they're isolating, they're separating themselves from giving themselves to the body the way that it seems like they should. PTSD, they've been hurt, they've been wounded. They've been attacked by a demon. There's PTSD. So what happens is I'm gonna take control in my hands now because I've been hurt in the church. Now I'm going to take control. I'm gonna isolate myself just a little bit. I'm gonna only bring people in my life that I wanna bring in. But anybody that God brings in, if I don't want them, I'm not gonna bring them in. Even if God wants it, I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna get hurt again. This is just one example of control. So this is what King Jesus said. He said, if you wanna be in control, control is a fruit of pride. And this is what he was showing in my personal life today. He was delivering me from this. And I'm weeping like a hot mess snot, just, oh my gosh. I went and bought all the Kleenexes at Walmart and came, no, I'm kidding. But, but he says, if you wanna be, be in control, then Leviathan is your king because Leviathan is the king of the children of pride. And control is a fruit of pride. Pride says, I don't trust you. I think I can take care of myself better than you can take care of me. But see, King Jesus is the good shepherd and he always takes care. And Ephesians says that God gave Christ to the church for my benefit. I'm, I'm part of the church. So as long as I'm in control, guess who's my king? I can say Jesus is my king. I can mark the answer correctly, but ultimately guess who's my king in this area of my life that I'm struggling with? Leviathan's my king. And when Leviathan's my king, chaos and confusion and heaviness, they come in with Leviathan. 
suffocation, doubt, antichrist, opens the door for antichrist to come in. But when Jesus is king, that means I have to trust him. But if I wanna be in control, the enemy lies and says, you're in charge, but that's not the truth. We're actually not in charge. Leviathan is king and actually he's in charge. And that's why the things you don't wanna do, you wind up doing because you're serving, you think you're in charge, it's actually Leviathan. Why do I keep doing this? I don't wanna do it. Because Leviathan, he's your king. He's your master. You have to do what your king tells you to do. You think you're in control, that's a false lie. Or that's a false narrative. It's a lie, you're not. You're not in control. Because Leviathan's your king. But if King Jesus is in charge, that means you have to trust him and you gotta take your hands off of whatever it is that you're struggling with. And this is, this is where leaning into the Holy Spirit, leaning into your King Jesus in humility as a son and a daughter, leaning into Abba and saying, Abba, I trust you. He made Jesus King and he made him the head over the church for our benefit. Go ahead and stand to your feet with me. If I wanna be in control, then Leviathan is king because controlling my life is prideful. And Leviathan is the king of the children of pride. But if I want King Jesus to be in control, then that makes him king. Letting go of control and trusting King Jesus is key. I let go of control of my life. King Jesus, you are king of my life, every area. I must decrease, King Jesus must increase. I'm not important in my own eyes. You know why we control ourselves? Because we think we're so important in our own eyes. Just think about it. Control is prideful because it's about you. It's saying I know better than King Jesus. And if I can control it, if I can control it, then I can probably get it done faster than he can. I could probably get it done faster. I could probably do just a good, it's all about I, I, I. I can't, I can't, I can't. Pride's a sneaky little devil. It's sneaky. And what happens is over time, we build these strongholds in our mind that the strongholds in our mind, if we don't tear them down, it's just gonna put us back and to us being in control and then Leviathan becomes our king in that area of our life. And then we don't, we, we, we wonder why does the same thing happen like, like time work. So King Jesus has to show up and he has to drive out Leviathan, drive out pride and he, when he shows up, he doesn't yell. He doesn't have to. He's king. His presence alone drives out wickedness, drives out pride. He cares about the making of you. He cares about the making of you. He cares more about who you are than what you do for him. He cares way more about who you are. And he's so good that he won't do shortcuts for you to make you feel like you're further along than you really are just to appease you and make you feel a certain way. No, he won't do it. He'll let you keep thinking you're in charge, but really Leviathan's in charge. And Leviathan brings in confusion, chaos, witchcraft, religion. Religion's a form of witchcraft. Leviathan brings in some sneaky little devils with him. Got to get your hands off your marriage. You can't control your spouse. 
There's a way to steward your kids without controlling them. You can't control your kids. Get your kids under control. I can't, I can't control my kids. Did you know not, not one moment in your entire life did God ever control you without you giving him permission? And even at that, when we give him permission to control us, he still does not control us. He doesn't make you lift your hand and worship him. Control me, God. Lift my hand and make me worship you. He doesn't do that. Now, when you willfully yield to him, he can zap you with his power and then poof, flop against the wall. That could happen. He may even use you to pray for a witch doctor and the power of God hit that witch doctor, hit the wall. He gave him a taste of his power, but he's not controlling the witch doctor. God's not a control freak. Whether we believe it or not, we can't control our kids. Tell your newborn baby to stop crying. See, see if he listens. You just shut up and stop crying. Can't control them. Get your kids under control. Control is actually a form of not only pride, but it's also a fruit of witchcraft. And if we're going to be a people that hosts his glory well, before it ever hits this house, it needs to hit our homes. I said, before it hits this house, it needs to hit our homes. We're going to have to let go of control. My wife and I were having dinner last night with a couple that goes to our church. And she said, the wife said, man, when you talk about shutting the service down, or you're going to like, you know, stop preaching. She's like, no, keep going. Keep going. So I'm going to keep going on behalf of her tonight. I'm kidding. The point is, is there are people who are hungry. You can't, you can't control people. You can't, you can't even, you can't even control yourself. To, like what, the kind of control I'm talking about is the kind of control to try to protect yourself. You, you, can't, you can't protect, God is our protector. Now he's given a self-control to say no to sin, absolutely. I'm not saying like, pastor said I can't control myself. I'm just gonna go out and do meth and have sex with whatever I want. No, I'm talking about the kind of control that is, that is removing God's hands off of your life because you think you can do a better job or because you simply just do not fully trust him. Some of you need to let go of control. You need to get your hands off and ask God to put his hands on through repentance and humility and brokenness. And when you do, I promise you, King Jesus will show up with a crown on his head and a scepter in his hand, with a robe on his neck, going down his back, and he will drive out every demon that's been harassing you. I promise you he will. You'll have an encounter with King Jesus that will mess you up for the better. <sighs> Anxiety wants to move you into control, but peace keeps King Jesus in control. What's one of the goals of anxiety when it rises up? You step in and put your hands on it. Kids start acting out, oh, and anxiety, oh, shut up. Control, witchcraft. We just have to call it what it is. If we can recognize it for what it is and stop downplaying, well, I just blew up. No, you actually did witchcraft though. You try to control your kids. 
you operated in witchcraft in that moment. If we see it for what it, one of the, one of the ways the enemy has many believers bound in Hunt County is by downplaying their sin. I just overreacted, you know, and it's not a big deal. Everybody overreacts. No, it's a very big deal. There's something wrong there. Why? What's the issue? What's going on? We, we have to, it's called maturity, amen? God, God, God wants us to mature in Christ. There's a righteous indignation. Yes, Jesus experienced that. We see that when he flips tables over. But he never controlled anybody. He rebuked his disciples, but he never controlled them. At any moment, they had the option to leave him. Matter of fact, he gave them an open door to leave them when the crowd left Jesus after he got done talking about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. He said, hey, boys, you're gonna leave me too? You guys heading out as well? He gave them a way out, but they stayed with him. Him pursuing you is not him controlling you. It's the Father's love coming after you. But then we must respond. And the more our hearts are filled with his light and his love, the less we control. You came on a good night tonight. You came on a good night tonight. I want you to close your eyes right where you are. Control can represent that you see yourself as important. That you see yourself as a somebody. But the truth of the matter is, in humility, not with a victim orphan mentality, what I'm about to say, but in humility, we must see ourselves as nothing. I'm not saying, well, poor pity me. I'm, yes, yes, you're a warrior. Yes, you're a son. Yes, you're a daughter. But I'm talking about in your own eyes. When you walk in the room, it's not like, who's looking at me? Man, the party can start. It's about me. It's, it's, it's throughout the week. King Jesus, if you don't deliver me from this, I'm nothing. I have no power outside of you. I can do nothing separate from you. I'm nothing. I am nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not important. I'm not... I'm a nobody. I mean, you, you chose me. I just, it's, it's humility. And, and, then, and then there's the side of humility. Yes, you're a warrior. Yes, you can, you can command demons. Yes, you can, God uses you to lay your hands on the sick, but it's him who does it. We're nothing separate from King Jesus. But when we put our hands on something, what we're saying is, oh, I'm something. And King Jesus, I don't like how slow you're acting and handling this. Or it's like we're just moving his hands off and we, we see ourselves as important. This is what I want us to do before we go tonight. Now, you know at this point there's no shame in deliverance. There's no shame in responding to this altar. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna open these altars. And if you've been dealing with controlling an area of your life, and maybe, listen, a lot of, a lot of people's hearts, I guarantee you in the room, or you want King Jesus to be the one to come in and take, take charge, like, like, you, you really desire him to come in, but there's just, I'll tell you what the root of it is. It's pride and that it's gotta go. Jealousy is a fruit of pride. Selfish ambition is a fruit of pride. Trying to build your company on your own, trying to do your thing on your own. All in the name of Jesus. Oh, I'm building his kingdom. No, you're not. You're building your own because you're in charge. And King Jesus isn't your king in that area. Leviathan's your king. We have to call it for what it is to recognize how serious this is. It's one of the schemes of the devil is to downplay control. And the devil knows that control is witchcraft. He knows it's wicked. 
And you need to be so free where you have no fight in you at all to want to control a thing. You just want to be led by the Holy Spirit in everything you do and everything you say. You don't want to control your spouse. You don't want to control your children. You don't, want even, you don't even want to control your animals. You don't lose your mind on your animals. So you're just letting go and you're letting God. These altars are open. If you say, man, I need to, I need to repent tonight. I got some things. I got, I, got, I got to let go of control. I got to repent of pride as a son, as a daughter. These altars are open. You just come and humble yourself as a son and a daughter. This, this only works if you see yourself as a son and a daughter. And this only works if you come to him humbly, repentant, asking King Jesus to show up on your behalf to help you and deliver you. Declaring, Abba, I trust you. I want to trust you. I'm struggling to, but I want to. King Jesus, I want to trust you. And I don't know why I can't. Holy Spirit, I need you to reveal that if it's necessary, but I just let go of control. I need you to show up. I need you to deliver me. Unless you wash me, I won't be clean. I can't clean myself. You've been hurt, wounded by an individual, by people, by parents, by another brother or sister in Christ, by a church, whatever. Demons love to hide in wounds. They love to come in and hide in deep wounds. They're cowards. They come in through wounds and they love to hide in those wounds. And these demons who hide, as a result, they'll make you wind up hiding as well. And as long as you're hiding, you're in control. But you need to come out from hiding and say, King Jesus, come. Drive out any wickedness in me, any evil spirit in me. Come up and come out. Python, rejection, orphan, spirit, whatever it is, I need you to come up and come out. I need you to deliver me, King Jesus. Some of you need to say, I'm nothing. King Jesus, without you, I'm nothing. I repent for seeing myself as something important in a prideful way, in an arrogant way. King Jesus is showing up, driving out this control, this controlling spirit, this prideful spirit. Some of you are getting self-delivered right now. Self-delivered. It's King Jesus doing it, but you're yielding. Nobody's having to lay hands on you is what I mean. Just King Jesus in you. You can have it all. Oh, yeah, give it all to him. It all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. You can have it all. Oh, it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. You can have it all. It all belongs to you. It all
everyone just tell them right now and say, King Jesus, you're my king. I give you all authority. I give you all control. You're in charge of my life. You're in charge of my life. You're in charge. I need you to come. Come on, see him. See him as a king with a robe, with a scepter, with a crown. See him coming into your mind. See him coming into your your soul and just driving out wickedness. Driving out prides, jealousy. He's driving out every lurking demon that's been hiding out in wounds since you were a child. He's coming in and he's driving this stuff out. He's driving out every evil spirit. He's exposing every stronghold. He's driving out the filling of wanting attention. The feeling of wanting to be seen by people. The feeling of wanting to be recognized. The feeling of your success is attached to how much money you make. He's driving out this stuff. It's not healthy. It's not okay. It's not just everybody struggles. No. It needs to go. It's not a part of the kingdom of heaven. It's got to go. It's got to go. It can't stay. Let King Jesus drive it out. Through your humility, your brokenness, your repentance, let him drive it out. Selfish ambition. It's got to go. That fight to want to control, that fight to want to maintain the... You feel like it's on you. It's on your shoulders to provide for your family, husbands. It's on your shoulders to provide for your family, men. No, it's not. Moms that feel like it's on your shoulders to make sure your kids stay pure. That's not on your shoulders. I felt as a mom, I've oh, messed up again. Ah. Let go of that control. Trust Abba Father with your children. They're getting a taste of the kingdom of heaven through you. And I'm telling you, as they keep getting taste of the kingdom of heaven through your life, you raise a child in the way they should go. When they get older, they won't depart. Let go of control. Let go of that anger. Let go of the, the feeling where you feel like you're justified in blowing up. You feel like you're justified in being rude. Well, they were rude to me, and so I just got to give them a piece of my mind. You're justified. I got to tell my boss what's up. All of that stuff, it's got to go. It's not healthy. It is not normal in the kingdom of heaven. It may be normal in this world, but it is not normal in the kingdom of heaven. And you are a citizen in that kingdom. And King Jesus loves you too much to keep you that way. But you got to invite him to come in and drive that stuff out. You can't do it by yourself. This is how we're going to end tonight. We're just going to let you linger in the presence of Abba. There's going to be no official dismissal. I don't want to stop what King Jesus is doing. Some of y'all need a few more minutes.
Let the Holy Spirit minister to you. Let King Jesus come in. Let him drive every ounce of wickedness. encourage you not to leave until you sense his peace. You just linger. You're dismissed. Those who are ready to head out, you, you can of course leave at any time, but even if you didn't respond, you just want to linger in his presence, you can do so.